Hey guys, through this video, I'd like to warn you about the use of JPEG images for scientific image processing tasks. Now, in the last tutorial, I warned you about the data augmentation part of Keras. And uh, I said for categorical labels, please be careful because it's changing your actual labels. Now, JPEG does even worse. Okay, and uh, let's actually, let me show you exactly what I mean. Again, taking the example from last time. So we have images, okay, and corresponding masks. This mask here is a hand-painted, let's say, label representing different regions in our original image. So this is a semantic segmentation example, okay? So this gray, dark grayish region is representing these bright pixels, okay? So now, uh, if you go back to my image and look at the pixel values, let's bring up the histogram. You can see the histogram has four peaks. That means all the pixels in my image are represented by four values, that's it. Okay, if you look at the list, these values are 33. Okay, so I have 957 individual data points showing nine, uh, a value of 33. And then I have uh, 65 and 201 and 231, okay, 201 right there, 862 of these data points and 231 right there, okay? And it's very important for me to keep these numbers. So it doesn't matter what label, I mean, what mask I actually pick. These are the four values that I should be seeing because this is this is the labels uh, for, my, uh, for my challenge here, yeah? Uh, for which I'm trying to build a deep learning or a machine learning model. Okay, now why am I warning you about uh, JPEG? Okay, so let's actually go back to our augmented. So what I'm trying to do is, you see my folder is empty, let's actually augment some data, uh, 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 some of these images. In the last tutorial, I went through the Keras image data generator and I said, okay, it adds some artifacts, go ahead and watch that. So I don't want this to be a repetition of uh, my last tutorial, but I said, okay, I have written something that's much better than Keras. Well, probably not better than Keras, but uh, at least it solves the problem I was encountering, which is uh, changing the pixel values of my images, okay, of my masks. Images also, but masks, it's more important. Okay, so let's do one exercise. So let's generate 20 images and masks, and the images and masks are read from this uh, uh, folder. Again, this is out of the, I mean, uh, not the point I'm trying to make in this uh, tutorial. What I'm trying to make is I'm saving the images and masks as PNG first, okay? So let's go ahead and save them. I should see a bunch of images in my augmented folder. And now let's uh, kill this image and open one of these augmented images, right? This is this is an augmented, this is not original mask anymore. So for the augmented image, if I look at the histogram, it looks exactly the same, right? So you see my histogram, it should have a pixel value of 33, 65. Again, I can go down and show you the other two. Everything looks clean. Great. Let's go ahead and close this delete all of these let's change this png extension to tiff file tiff is even better i like to work with tiff files and now let's open this and see uh, augmented images so these are all tiff files let's randomly pick one and open and look at the histogram it should look pretty much the same because it shouldn't change my data okay there you go 33 65 and everything okay that's now everything is working fine and by the way uh I'm rotating, I'm doing random rotations, but then I said order equals to zero. Again, I talked about this in the last tutorial. What that means is when you're rotating the matrix, do not do interpolation, okay, between the data points. That's what probably was going on with Keras. That's why the issues with Keras, okay, in case you haven't watched the previous tutorial. Okay, so let's delete all of these and now you know what I'm gonna do, right? So now I'm going to change this to JPEG. And now let's see the magic. Okay, there you go. And they look pretty cool, actually. If I open this, they look exactly like before, except if I open this in image J, for example, and look at my histogram, that is such a crappy histogram. You see, it added all these pixels. If you look at the uh, the histogram values, two, one, one, four, you know, it's, it's almost like, okay, I have these many pixels. Like at 33, I still have 236 pixels, but some of them are assigned of a pixel value of 27 or something. Yeah, you keep going. And then you see another small peak. Oh, I don't even see anything at 65. I'm supposed to have something at 65. And do I have anything at 201? 
This is a completely screwed up image. I don't know why we work with JPEGs for scientific imaging anymore. Uh, for, for regular photos, if you want to share it with your mom, grandmas, you know, that's, that's fine. Uh, even for regular shooting, I actually shoot my uh, photos in RAW and then edit them and then save it to JPEG if I want to share it with someone, for example, on Twitter or uh, Facebook. Okay, so here is the issue with JPEG using one example. There are other issues, you know, even if you're from uh, remote sensing and if you're used to using JPEG 2000 format, it's great format because you can compress large images into something you can handle. But again, please keep in mind that it is compressed and some information uh, is changed and what is changed it depends on your knowledge about that domain I cannot talk to you about remote sensing, but please be aware that uh, Information changes when you do any compression. So TIFF is usually the best format PNG is probably okay JPEG is definite. No in fact the best format to work with is called OME TIFF which is open microscopy environment TIFF file uh, Because it can work uh, it lets you work with multi-dimensional files. Okay again uh, uh, go ahead and look it up. So thank you very much for watching this video and I hope you found this to be useful and uh, hopefully you'll not make uh, the same mistakes I have made in the past. Thanks. Please subscribe.